Jacobs, I like uh, the final line there from Mithy. Doesn't matter. They're still, still going to win the whole thing. I mean, Spy showed up big time, and, and we don't even know how H2K is going to look. We haven't seen them now in a few weeks, and it is playoffs, you know, maybe oh, G2 it's Esports. so exciting. It's, so, it's, it's such a great start to you never know. You never know. Summer Sport Playoffs. Uh, that concludes the quarterfinals, so it is time to check out some of the best performances of the week. So here are your LCS big plays. They are, of course, brought to you by Acer. Let's start with Power of Evil. He's been the main carry for Misfits Gaming this split. He showed his skills yesterday with some style in the mid lane. So let's take a look. We need to look towards that world spot and we need to play around the mid lane, say Misfits, as the knock back onto Exile. He flashes, but it's first blood in the mid lane and Misfits do exactly what we want them to. Hello, buddy's here. Hey, I show on the map, you can go mid, you can go. Nice, nice, nice. nice. There's, there's a pink there. Hello, buddy's parity. Oh, They're fighting up. I got him. Hello, buddy's parity. Nice. I need yeah. the base. Shot. After, did you get pop out? Got it. We can't come. He has flash. He has flash. They're not coming. I think I got him. Oh, he's shit. Mid, mid. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? I don't have flash. Good job, good job. Nice. <sighs> oh, it's so cool. I like it. Always, you know, I got him. Don't worry. He's going wait. Wait. Oh, I got him. It's fine. It's fine. After game one, where Hans Summer looked great, I asked the question on Twitter. I said, who was a better AD carry? Do you know it was 50% to 50% after 6,000 votes? Well, after this one, Power of Evil probably got it. I think so too. But it wasn't just Power of Evil that made uh, big plays yesterday for Misfits Gaming. Hans Summer! Hey! He also proved himself as a carry for the team, especially when he got his hands on the Yordle Gunner in game two. TP as well, they want this! They want a grand team fight, that is! Your predictions are coming true! The Root, the Nightlife, the Kills, the Misfits! As they clean up after the Barons! Your predictions are coming true! The Root, the Nightlife, the Kills, the Misfits! As they clean up after the Barons! I'm trying to get onto the Twist, can he take him out? No, he can't! Knocked up, taken down, double kill! Hans Summer and the Misfits are gonna play clean up crew! He's going through the Pacer! He gets the triple! He Gets the quadra, give us a penta and Samus to start us off. The EU LCS quarterfinals start off with a penta kill. I love the team calls. <laughs> now I think Hansama is the best AD carry on the team. Oh, did you vote though? I switch a lot. So okay. when I saw the uh, uh, Power of Evil replays, I'm like, he's the one. Yeah. Now after that pentakill, it's Hansama. To be fair, Power of Evil's ignite mechanics were more impressive than his AD carry mechanics. Yeah, but it, yeah, AD carries don't play with that. You know, they, they don't use the summoners. No, they don't. That's it's why very it's unfair. Like... Right. Anyway, Splice they managed to come back from an 11,000 gold deficit in game one versus G2. They were led by their top laner, Wonder, in the deciding team fights. It was not easy being Sven <laughs> and at Shine on LOL. Tweeted a Camille ulting onto you with Black Shield, topped off with Galio ulting onto that Camille. That and does not well. look fun. No, it doesn't. Uh, Trashy have no flash for a potential engage. And keep following Miffy, of course. He's oh, been the oh. game changer. Sven's been locked in by the Hextech Ultimator. Oh, and he's shut down. Wonder gets the kill credit. That's a great gnaw into the Cataclysm that was put down by Trashy. Wonder's found perks. He's not going to find him just yet. The Hourglass buys some time. Two kills for G2. Right. And Senkex gets another. So, hovering around bound. Wonder goes in. All right, Sven seems to be the target. Buster shot has been fired. Sven there it is. is taken down. Where is Perks now? He's exhausted. Everybody from Splice is jumping out. The stuns come down. There's no damage left. G2 just got dunked. Cataclysm comes out after the flag and drag. The Wunar into the wall. But it's Cobby with a double kill. Yeah, I'm definitely going to rewatch uh, game one. 100%. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, didn't even see the Camille Morgana combo until we actually got that one late game fight. <laughs> it never really clicked. You were like, oh, you know, Tristana can just shoot the Camille away every time. And you're like, wait. Yeah, Black theoretically. Shield. Black yeah. Shield. Well, wow, that was about six hours ago at this point, Fisher. So I know. Prop, props costume, dude. I'm almost a year older now. There we go. That will do it from us here at the cast list. Let's send it up to Shocks for the post game lobby. <laughs>
series on our hands in the final series of the week. G2 and Splice were in a thrilling fight that went all the way to game five. The reigning champions in the end managed to secure the win, but it was much, much closer than expected, I believe, when we tallied the votes of the analysts and kind of everyone we spoke to it was, it might be a 3-0, but it's gonna be incredibly close in games. Well, the games were close, but it wasn't a 3-0. And uh, it's easy to say, oh, well, was G2 the better team all along? But there's just so much more nuance to this series than that. So probably, w was there anything you can point out that G2 was better at in the end? Um, I think when the pressure kind of started heating up in the games, that's when G2 really was just looking pretty normal. Like that very last Baron fight that uh, that won them the game, like Splice was very, very timid. They weren't sure if they should go for it. And G2 just immediately looked, looked like they knew what they wanted to do and they just kind of went for it. I think that kind of confidence from G2 is what like gives these even gives them these edges in these like longer games and series. Mm -hmm. That's something that actually, Vettis, you brought up beforehand when we discussed the semifinals. You said, I want to see kind of the adaptability and the clutchness of G2 in a best of five series. And I think this is a great example. You've got to remember that this team, they've been to MSI, they've been to Worlds, they went to MSI again. These guys have had uh, <laughs> a lot of international competition against some of the best teams in the world and they've been pushed to the very brink multiple times. This scenario for them is not as new as it should be for Splice. And when you're so so close to being able to defeat G2, the reigning kings in Europe, and make yourself into the semifinals and to play at Paris, that is going to weigh on your mind in those last few fights. But as you heard Perk saying, like he was shoving those ideas out of his head and he was like, focus on my play, make sure I'm doing what I need to for my team. And as probably said, I think that was the key difference in those final few fights. Yeah, uh, Febivan, I don't think I've ever seen you as animated as when you were watching that <laughs> game because it was so back and forth that you were struggling with the fact that you're Perk's friend. But on the other hand, you know, it would be nice to slice one as well for your future competitors also. But uh, what do you think in the end of, of the mid lane competition? We were saying that Senkox was outperforming perks but did it really just come down to keeping a cool head in the final moments hmm I mean I would still say that Senkus outperformed uh, perks in the series even though I think the last game perks played really well with his ultimates and like his flanks were really game changing and yeah being able to stay cool in your head I mean I'm pretty sure Senkus can do it as well but maybe perks a bit more because he played more international events and um, might be a bit more grown up, I feel like, than Senkooks. Um, but yeah, I think Senkooks still outperformed Perks, but G2 was slightly the better team today. Yeah, slightly the better team, Just which makes it bit. so heartbreaking for Splice. We saw them after the game, and especially after having not a good or not the best split, we, we couldn't really say that we'd seen in immense growth from them. I think that's fair to say. And then Senkox steps up. Wonder has some great games. Trashy was playing out of his mind. The bottom lane carries some games. Like, it must be so, so heartbreaking for them. It, it certainly will be. But you also have to have that element of excitement going into the gauntlet too. Because you've got uh, a not so great looking Unicorns of Love. You've got a really strong Splice. Uh, and there are a lot more teams still left to see who will remain in the gauntlet. And it's going to lead to some really exciting games here in Europe as to who will be able to crawl through and take that spot. It will, but with that, after our first week of playoffs, the teams for Paris are locked in, and more importantly, or evenly so, we have our matchup for the semi-finals. It's going to be Misfits Gaming facing off against Fnatic, and H2K versus G2, which is one of the reasons why Febben was so uh, tense <laughs> watching this series. We'll talk about H2K G2 later. I want to start with Misfits Gaming. They beat the Unicorns of Love, which puts them now up against Fnatic, and that will be the first semi-final that will also be played next Saturday. So uh, a quick recap, maybe Vedius wasn't as big of an upset, people said, but the fact that Misfits 3 owed Unicorns of Love so cleanly was kind of interesting. Uh, the, I think the biggest thing about that series was the fact that we saw a huge amount of growth from the Misfits team as a whole, not only individually, but their ability to work together. And for the Unicorns of Love, they seem to be making the same sort of mistakes and playstyles that they've been making for the entire mm -hmm. split. And one of the big frustrations that I hear from, from pro, uh, pros and Alice is that Unicorns seem to be winning through weird ways. They, don't, they seem to be winning through a unique style that's difficult to prepare for. And I felt like that through really good prep from Misfits, they were able to expose it and punish it very effectively. Yeah, they don't really rely on like one strategy to work. It's kind of like, yeah, when they pick talent, like sometimes it's going to go like 5 0, zero <laughs> 5. You can't really consistently say, like, okay, we'll have this pick and we know how to play around it. It's like, it just works or, or it doesn't. There's not much uh, 
you know, rhythm to it, I feel like. So we saw a huge growth from uh, Misfits, even though, um, you know, Unicorns of Love also had a bit of questionable drafts. We have to say that Misfits were well prepared. They played well. They had Hansama stepping up, especially cool for him because he'll be celebrating his birthday also in Paris and he is French. So that's going to be nice. But uh, it's cool to see that evolution because Power of Evil was really all we heard this split, I think, from Misfits. He was always stepping up. He had great stats across the board, but not always that secondary carry. So we'll see if that is enough, Febavin, because now they are going up against Fnatic. So have you seen enough from Misfits that you think that they can beat Fnatic? Mm, it's really hard to say. I think Fnatic is probably the best team right now and like a, a way step higher than every other team. Um, I think Misfits is like, they play kind of the same play style, um, but I think they have just weaker players in every role. And also, um, their drafts are a bit worse than Misfits, I feel like. Um, and yeah, I think F Fnatic have like, you know, Cubs, Cubs, Reckless, and like Solas, you know, like all these star players, which I think will outperform the opponents. And it's going to be tough for them. Well, especially like we saw how G2, you know, you said they've been to a lot of events, they have a lot of experience. Take a look at that Fnatic roster. They have a wealth of experience, plus those new rookies that are super hungry. I mean, may not forget Caps, he also played the finals over in the TCL. So there is so much in that lineup, probably. Um, how do you see this going? Is this a clean cut for Fnatic? Uh, I feel like it is. I mean, like, uh, Misfits played really well against UOL, but I feel like they haven't played that well for long enough to bet on them in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if they can show up the way they did against UOL, I think it will be a closer series. But I think most likely the way that they played against UOL, like Fnatic won't fall into this trap. Fnatic will have a strong draft. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, Fnatic has really strong laners, like a good jungler. Like, I feel like there's, they don't have the same weaknesses that UOL has. But also, I think that when you think of growth, sure, Misfits, they prepped extremely well, they developed really well as a team, but Fnatic, post Rift Rivals, uh, and even before that, coming into the third place match in Hamburg, they look like a completely different team. And these guys know how to prepare and they know how to evolve. So they will see this playstyle from Misfits and they will, I believe, be able to effectively adapt and, and shut it down. And while I do think Misfits will make the series interesting and they will not make it an easy best of five series for Fnatic, I still think the Fnatic's the favorite. To summarize it, I feel all of you guys are pegging it for Fnatic yes, going to indeed. the finals. That would put Fnatic in the finals up against either H2K or G2. H2K. <laughs> I oh my I word, who. this is an interesting semi-final. And it was so, so nice. I cannot repeat it just to watch it here with some members of H2K. <laughs> uh, in the end, you got to beat everyone if you want to win the championship, right? But uh, Febivin, is there kind of, you know, <laughs> obviously a special, I wouldn't say fear, but there's more anxiety going into a best of five versus a G2 that has now proven that even versus a great splice, in those final moments, they have enough to finish off the game. Yeah, for sure. Like, I I believe that, I don't know, like, I just have this feeling that people think Fnatic is like the best team in EU, but then I also feel like G2 is like, I just feel like they're a bit better. Like, I don't know what it is, but I just feel like G2, um, yeah, they're just a better, like the best team in Europe, you know, and they will always be. I mean, they have been for like three splits in a row now, you know, so. I uh, know, I really much rather have, would have faced Misfits, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, going up against G2 will be like ultimate test. And if we win against uh, G2, I'm really confident that we will win against Fnatic. Well, there's a lot of things here. It's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because it's like, well, I do think they're the best. So then in the end, if you lose to them, it was right all along. But um, that aura of invincibility, probably, we thought that was shattered, you know? We thought that it was shattered for G2. Kings can bleed. They lost a couple of series. They almost lost this one. They had to go to the quarterfinals. How do you feel about that? Do you agree with Febivin that they might still be just the best team in Europe? I mean, I think... They're really good for sure, but they are making a lot more mistakes than they used to. Like when they were a really strong team, you know, they went from like, you know, really good to like, you know, beating or matching SKT some some games. And in that transformation, they really almost fixed a lot of their problems where like, yeah, Perk is getting caught out or they're having weak laning phases, stuff like that. But then this split, all those problems kind of came back that made like uh, G2 not the like top top. And I feel like that's where they're at right now, where they still have similar issues and 
they still have really good gameplay. Like their team fights are really confident. Their their Baron calls are really really fast. Um, but they're not this thing like last year where you'd go against G2 and you'd be kind of like shaking in your chair a bit. Mm -hmm. Like, what do we do against them? Now it's kind of like you can kind of see the weaknesses in the crack show and you can kind of play for that. Or you can just focus on yourself because, yeah, like Splice showed, if you play well, they're not unbeatable. Voila, in the post interview that with Drake, was that Perks also mentioned, he said, well, yeah, I, I I did feel that feeling of shock. Are we going to go out in quarterfinals? In one way, that's all behind them, though, right? Maybe that, that shock effect's not something they have to go through again. Now they can just play freely and, and crush H2K. Uh, <laughs> this is all hy hypothesis. I think it's... Uh, I think Perks' performance will definitely be a step up, something that... Uh, uh, I had a great chat with Feverman about was, I don't know why, but every time I play against Perks, he just seems to play better. <laughs> it's just like, uh, and I think that is a respect thing because you do have to remember that a lot of fans, I mean, Alice, other teams, respected Feverman enough to vote him as the strongest mid laner in Europe right now. And I feel like a lot of other mid laners show that level of respect towards him. So I think we're in for quite an exciting mid lane matchup. But also the big thing in my mind right now is that H2K this year have really struggled against top teams in Europe. And I think that them going up against G2 will be a big test for them in terms of how well they can prepare because now they've had to experience firsthand. Well, I say firsthand. They got to sit here and analyze very deeply. And get Vedius's insights. And my great insight too mm, on, on some yeah, of the yeah. weaknesses from G2. But it's about whether or not they can then apply that because we do know that H2K are a very smart team. They have a lot of strong individuals, but sometimes the execution is what matters on game. Day. Yeah, let's... Uh get those two things and discuss them separately. First off, probably, how confident are you in kind of the, the game of five games in a row with drafts where in game five you have to come up with the right thing? How confident in your abilities are you that, at least for that part, you can outsmart G2 or you can make the right decisions if it comes to that? Um, well, the good thing that we've been practicing a lot more recently has been involving the whole team in these kind of discussions on how we're adapting. And I think before in playoffs, it was really just me doing it by myself and the players would give like small feedback and that became like a really big issue because then our drafts would kind of be on two different pages where like I had a feeling and they had a feeling. But now it's become a lot more together where we're reaching conclusions like as a team instead of, you know, very one sided from my perspective. So I feel like the adaptation between the series is going to be a lot easier than it has been in the past. And I think that's probably been one of our biggest issues when it came to playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the second one is keeping your head cool in-game when it comes to those clutch moments. G2 is is great at doing that. We've seen that. So are you guys confident enough, Evan? Are you confident enough as a team when probably is not there, right, to make mm -hmm. those decisions at the important moments? Mm, yeah, I would say personally, yeah. Uh, it's still really hard, obviously. Like, it really depends how the games go, I think, because sometimes... Um, you can get really affected or I can get really affected by my plays, um, depending on how I play. Like if I play really well, I won't get affected at all and I will play only better. But if I feel like I'm underperforming, then I will play worse. Uh, but obviously I can, I should be able to control this. So yeah, that's the goal obviously and play as well as possible and keep my head cool and yeah. we're gonna win this stuff. Hey, Perks, you heard it. Take trick and just go to that mid lane every second. <laughs> you, you, no, no. you will die. This, this, is, this, is, this is planned <laughs> this talk. Is planned yeah, talk. We've already set the trail. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move on in a second. I just want to bring up something that we talked about during uh, the day, probably. You were saying how looking at a best of five, it's kind of like uh, if there's an Olympic athlete that's going to go to the Olympics and don't get blindsided by the fact that, yes, you practiced for it for four years and it's make or break. Don't concentrate on the option of losing. Concentrate on the positive and the fact that you have to win it by yourself. Yeah, I mean, I think Perks kind of said that a bit in his interview where at first he thought like, you know, what happens if I get out in the quarters? And that's the kind of mentality that makes you like choke and fail mm -hmm. decisions because you're no longer thinking about like what the right thing is to do or, or how to win. You're kind of just working off of the fear emotion where you're like scared to do something, scared for something bad to happen. So this really like, yeah, chokes you up and kind of prevents you from seeing clearly. So. That was really good on him that he's able to kind of identify that and brush it off. And that's also, I mean, a thing we've been working on as well. And I think it really comes into play in these longer series where you really need a lot of endurance to make it through. Yeah. Oh, I 
almost can't wait for that matchup. HJK G2 is going to be so, so good, as well as the other one. Uh, there's still a lot to be decided in the summer playoffs, and we will get the next fights in the semifinals, starting with Fnatic versus Misfits Gaming, Saturday, the 26th of August. Um, so that would be the first one. Then you guys will play the day after, so at least you have you guys have had a lot of time already, but yes. you'll get much more time to figure out G2. And I just also want to mention that the teams obviously are playing for championship points, which can prove to be crucial in a fight for a spot at Worlds, because yes, Unicorns of Love are out, but they can still make it to Worlds. Um, they have the championship points to possibly work with, and they're definitely in the gauntlet. Any team that drops out is in the gauntlet. Splice most likely will be heading, well, actually they will be heading there. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the first thing to note is that all of the payoff teams will be in the gauntlet, because this is the same lot of teams that were in the playoffs last split. No teams from uh, anything can really come in or move away. The other important thing to note is because you're well already out, the most number of points they can get or the minimum number of points they can get is 90. This is also the maximum. And for Splice, unfortunately for them, is also 30. So they're going to be pretty low in the goal now, whereas UOL is still quite likely to be pretty high. But throughout the rest of the tournament, now we're in semi-finals, points can be a big factor in terms of qualifying for Worlds. And if you see the spot of H2K, it's going to be very difficult to for that go on team points. to go on points. So, so for you guys, it's basically win the split or win the gauntlet. Yeah, I think we can't go on points. So we're right. already kind of preparing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone we play now is going to either be in gauntlet or yeah. on our way to first place. So I'm actually a lot happier this split. I know it kind of sounds like a lie because the last two splits, HUK went on points. But I'm actually really excited like, to yeah. prove through like just defeating the team that split that mm -hmm. we can go to Worlds instead of kind of defaulting because we've done well for a whole year. Yeah, I kind of like that approach. Uh, and if you play phenomenally and still lose the final, you can also still like prove your worth through the gauntlet, right? And prove that you are the third team. Maybe quick, uh, who would you like to see as Europe's representatives at Worlds? Betty? Personally, I would love to see G2, Fnatic, and then Spice. Oh. <laughs> 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 we all make mistakes. I will be Twitch chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, the thing is, I haven't seen H2K play yet, so I also haven't seen Fnatic play yet. But I think that right now, G2 and Fnatic are a very safe bet. Um, and if Misfits stay on the same trajectory they're on, they could be a good, um, a good representative. But the safe also bet would be H2K. Right, so you're changing it. Wait, yeah. I heard Misfits fly some. Uh, right now, what I'm effectively, saying, what I'm effectively yeah, saying is that I think it's too <laughs> early to say Mm -hmm. I want to see H2K play first, and next week's PGL, I will tell you who I want to see. I think Fevin has been going to the gym, and you're afraid that he's sitting next to you, and he's going to grab you. Yeah, if you uh, Fevin would never voice. hurt me. We bonded. And you right. also go to the gym, yeah. to be fair. We're now right? mid lane rivals. Right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Fevin, just quickly, who would be good representation, you think, from the way they uh, have played so far or playing now at Worlds? H2K and? Fnatic and G2. G2. No surprises, I think, from you either. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Pretty yeah. standard. Yeah, that was kind Just of a Just follow dead. my... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. What he said. Okay, well, while the top teams in Europe are fighting for the championship, the stakes are completely different in the promotion tournament. Here's how the race for a spot in the EULCS looks. Before the deciding week, we will be playing just on Thursday again, Thursday and Friday. So we're guaranteed to have a return of either Schalke or Giants into the LCS, and either Mysterious Monkeys or Ninjas in Pajamas will be knocked out. Uh, because this is a double elimination, uh, there will be one final matchup as well next Friday between the loser of Schalke and Giants and the winner of Mysterious Monkeys and NIP. So we have a two best of five day on Thursday, followed by that really, really exciting uh, last chance match, so to say, Indeed. on Friday. And let's also check out our matchups for next week because there's a lot online for both teams. Oh, no, we already did that. I thought we were going to look at the semifinal matchups. <laughs> but no, we're going to look at all the matchups. Fantastic. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all League of Legends all the time, with then our semifinals continuing on Saturday and Sunday, and also the last week in the studio before we all head to Paris and see what happens there. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. I'm quite happy with how the playoffs have gone so far, even though the Mysterious Monkeys was, um, Misfits was a clear 3-0. Today was very exciting, and I hope we see more of that. Thank you guys very much for joining me all day. Very good analysis. And uh, that was all here from us in the first week of playoff. Thank you all for watching as well. And join us next Saturday as the fight for the trophy continues with Fnatic versus Misfits Gaming. Have a great night. I'm flirting with the fish show.
It's good. Camille with one that dead. Baron is going low. Spins moving and trying to get the crit. Elastic slim shot in. 2,000 hit points on Baron. The cataclysm's already used. Final. It's stolen by Trick. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Who's that? Nice. It's all gone to hell for Splice. I think the rest of Splice are pushing for the Nexus. Oh, there's no way that expects going to be able to do this. And after 50 minutes of back and forth, Splice draw first blood against G2. That's why I call it game one. Copy's gone in for Miffy. Not going to find the deadly flourish. Oh, Copy's he's reloading. reloading on Whisper and G2 get two. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, that reloading sucks for Copy. He didn't get the kill. <laughs> they get themselves a couple of kills. They get themselves a couple of turrets. And they're going to get themselves a win in the second game. The Nexus is falling, and G2 even the series one to one. Guys, okay, are you ready for game number three? No. No. Uh, shoes off. Shoes off. Yeah. Oh, now, um, now we are. I, now we are. And I think he turns around and ends up getting that one last hit. Yeah, he yeah. turns around and then one last shot. Kind of you guys have to beat, really. <laughs> what the fuck? I was totally sudden, G2 are winning the fight, but Kobe and Wanda, they're in the midst of it all. Not gonna be enough. It's a double kill for Expect. Nice! Uh, and G2 win the fight, a man down. Oh, Joker, can you be more annoying in the late game? The Winions are enlisted for G2 Esports, and the Nexus falls. G2 won. One and two. Third connects through. The fourth does as well. A three-man knockup. What the fuck? They've taken down perks, a defensive flash from Miffy, the tower dive from Splice, and they get themselves three. Where's the shockwave? Locks in four. The shockwave deletes G2 Esports. Base is bashed, and Splice, they force a game five. Keep your eye on Sven and perks. Perks is being run down by Senkax. He's down. Now Sven follows. I'm dead. I'm dead too. You got them all. Nice. Oh, Max is coming over the wall. He's managed to find Senkas. Senkas, the shockwave, catches two, but he's shut down. Elder Dragon stolen by G2 as well. They've got three dragons. All of a sudden, Splice are being stomped. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody's dead yet. Cataclysm comes out. Blasco sends Senkas away from the fight. Miffy is zoning him. That's a double kill for Expect. A triple kill for Expect. Uh, no, 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 no. After a five-game series, G2 yell their era is not over.